Hello everyone. Now we are talking about very crucial topic of life that is ethics. Today we have the expert with us Dr. Sandhya Kumar. Fortunately, she is the author of this lesson and I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal. Let us understand what is ethics in definition. Ethics are a set of standards and rules that are required by an individual for leading a satisfactory family life and being a good worker at any place of your job. Madam, throw light on this word itself. Thank you, uh, Anjana ji. This is a great opportunity for me to interact uh, on this topic. It is uh, very dear to me because the very essence of the word ethics is something that impacts our life at each and every point. I enjoyed uh, writing the content for this topic. And uh, when I think of ethics, ethics come from values. They come from observing our elders, people around us in society, at our workplace. So these are behaviors which are ingrained in us Very right good. from the childhood. Very right. If a child in the family is observing the parents behaving properly, that is the behavior that the child in their life. learns. And if the child is observing wrong behavior, that is what the child learns. Yes. So ethics are something that come to you naturally. So ethics is the attitude of being good or bad in behavior, action and taking the decisions in different situations. It deals with the moral values. As you said, it brings the values and you imbibe those values since your childhood. Yes. So it helps to identify the individual as well as the organization for its integrity. Yes, when you talk of uh, ethics in an organization, uh, they are defined by the kind of people who are working in that workplace. Right. If the people are working properly, observing their duties as they should be doing right. and who are sincere in towards their work, then the entire work culture of the organization becomes ethical. Let us see what are the ethical behavior, sincerity, honesty and truthfulness, respect for self and others, respect for time and work, and respect for our workplace as well as respect for our environment. Let us see what is important for the workplace, regularity and punctuality, confidentiality, loyalty, maintaining cordial relationship with the colleagues as well as the clients who come to the organization, willingness to learn and take on new initiatives and the responsibility and accept the challenges. Ma'am, how we can train our listeners See, uh, many of uh, our viewers who would be uh, seeing this program uh, would perhaps be working already in some place or the other, right. in some capacity. Most of them have already started working. Some may be very new to their work, some may be having worked for a long time. I will take up the first uh, issue that you had shown uh, in the slide that was regularity and punctuality. punctuality right. Now, to me, there are two different concepts. One can be regular in coming to work. Right. Very true. I come to work every day. My office time is from 9 to 5.30. I come every day. Whether I come at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock and I leave either at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock or 5.30. But I'm regular. I come every day. Right. Right? So I just but the point is at what regularity time? and punctuality. Right? If you're not punctual... It doesn't matter what time you're coming to the office. If you're regular also, it doesn't matter because you're not punctual. You have to maintain a certain professionalism in your work. You have to come at 9 o'clock. You have to clock in. Start work at 9 o'clock and then work till 5.30. That is your regularity and punctuality. Now, once I am at work, 
that is a second issue i have to be sincere towards my work i cannot say that uh, okay i have come to the office and that is enough for me no i have to do the work that i am supposed to be doing to the best of my ability i have to be true i have to be sincere i have to be committed these are all ethical values you're right then you talked of respect first of all i have to respect myself right totally if i respect myself as an individual i will be able to respect the others who are around me whether they are my parents whether they are my spouse whether they are my children my neighbors people i meet on the way to work people in my office when i have respect for everyone i will be very careful that i don't hurt them when you have respect for people you will also learn to respect your work environment wherever you're sitting that is your workspace right. you will be very careful to see that you keep it neat and clean, neat and clean. organized and that your papers are in order so that is your respect for your workplace, workplace. now this little bit i'll give it a small example people will come they will have their room very spick and span you know they will uh, call the cleaner and say that you've not cleaned my room today you've not dusted my table today right. because i want my room clean clean yet when the same person goes out into the stairwell into the staircase he is eating a pan and he will just spit it over there right. that is not right because respect for environment for your workplace is your total workplace from the moment you enter the gates till you leave the gates of your office that is your work can you please few lines on the respect for the time also yes respect for time as i mentioned you know i may be free in my work day i may have a lot of time but if i come and sit with you and you do not have time right. i am wasting your time i have to respect that even though i may be free the others may be busy and i cannot impose upon them we are moving towards how the ethical value in our domestic lives so you have also said that respect for the self you explained very well others elders on time and maintaining the affectionate and respectful relationship with the young and the old is very very important very important is ability to judge the right and the wrong and the make right decisions at the right time all ethical behavior is something that you know taught from a very young age, young age. by parents by their example right so respect for elders is also something that comes by observing our elders around us how our parents are treating their elders so if we see our parents being very respectful to their parents that is what we learn so we become very respectful towards our grandparents also right. let us understand what is the need for ethics it guides the choice of thinking regarding right and wrong just now we were talking on these things nature of behavioral choice that will last long maybe throughout your life involves matters having consequences and another thing helps in developing the identity of a person in life and this sign of red yellow and this may be seen on the road but in life also somewhere if you keep walking on the right path it's a green but somewhere you have to stick stand think again whether i am going on the right path or wrong path so keep analyzing the situation so let us see where we want to go where these are all matters of the ethics before we go on to the unethical behavior i would like to talk on uh, one of the points you had just discussed that was the consequences of our behavior right if we are not behaving in an ethical manner it has many consequences if we think what is going to be the consequence of this action of ours we will stop ourselves in a sense when we talk of ethics it is all about making a choice is this choice that i'm making taking me and the world around me to in the right direction or is it going to create some other problem like we just saw the, as you said you mentioned there are uh, like traffic lights there's a green light there's an amber and there's a red right so when we take the right path we go towards green green the light is green yes you can go when we take a wrong decision 
an unethical decision, red. it goes towards the red. red. But there are points in time where we come to a dilemma. I don't know. Should I behave like this or should I do this? What is right? What is wrong? It is very normal, I will say, to come to these amber spots also. Because those are the points which make you think. If you are thinking, then you are on the right path. If you are not thinking, you obviously go towards the red. So avoid going towards the red. Keep it green. Yes. Green keeps your environment green, keeps your life green, keeps your relationships green. Everything is yes. green and go. So try and make, take decisions which take you towards the green path. Every situation or any work situation has the three components. And what are they? The work, the actual task to be done, the worker, the person who does the task, and the workplace for doing the task, and the tools and the equipments which are required to do the task, and maybe the storage space for keeping those tools and equipments. This is very important here. First, we are talking about the worker. Worker is the most important component of any work situation. We are doing the work here. We are talking here. This is because only the worker has the ability to think, analyze, learn and manipulate. And worker can also acquire the art of effect management after critical thinking, management of what? Of the work, of the workplace as well as the worker himself or the herself and the workers around it. If by chance worker is not following the ethical behavior or maybe disloyal or the lazy or you can see in the picture this is the person who has to stand and take the word but sleeping on the chair. So that means this worker is disloyal to his duties and responsibilities. So what will happen if this continue to follow the organization or business will keep following like a shipwreck. So work ethics helps in successful achievement of our goals, efficient utilization of our resources and maintain discipline at home and the workplace. I will just talk of uh, the three components that you had just mentioned, the yeah. worker, the workplace and the work itself. Now, if we uh, try and see the life of our learners, the work at hand as a learner is to learn what is given in the course, right? in the learning materials. And to learn all that, they are given certain assignments. Now, the work is to do the assignments. How will they do the assignments? They can do it by reading through the learning materials. Right. But if these learners are taking a shortcut by trying to organize things in such a way that I am doing the assignment for mathematics, you do it for physics, and the third person does it for Hindi, and then we will change it around and we will each have three assignments. That is ethically extremely wrong. wrong. Because my learning is in mathematics, yours is in Hindi, and the third person is doing right. a third subject. But I cannot learn from your learning. I have to do it on my own. So even in a student's life, in a learner's life, there are ethics. Yes. I have to be true to my work, my learning, my studies. Now, if I have to write an assignment, I can read about a certain thing on the internet, but then I have to write it myself. I cannot copy it from there and paste it over here and say my assignment is done. That again is unethical. And ethics are required in every little thing that we do. Right. We have to pay equal attention to our personal life, to our family, family life, life, to our children. We have to give time to our parents, to our grandparents, to our children. We have to balance it Balances. somehow. So work ethics helps to do the task to the best of our ability. 
they encourage us to develop and maintain a cordial work environment where we people enjoy working and support each other let us see some of the unethical behavior in other words it can also be told as ethical problems so irregular and lack of punctuality rude and impolite having inadequate knowledge and skill wasting resources disregarding rules and regulation disrespecting the task at hand and disloyal so this picture is very clear the person is saying you have to come at 8:30 but you are never on time and in the end this before 5:30 she is trying to leave the thing so punctuality is very important and discipline begins with the punctuality in life now other is impolite behavior so rude and impolite destroys the peaceful atmosphere at home as well as at workplace it destroys the goodwill of the person as well as the organization both and it brings the bad name to the family also you want to walk away from that person from that situation where you find let's take an example of two young boys they are yeah. using bad language so personally i would not want to be in that vicinity and listen to that bad language yeah. because that is impolite impolite i want them to be respectful to me and to talk properly to me uh using slang or rude language or a rude tone see rudeness can be in two ways one can be use of bad words four letter words or it could be a very sharp tone a derogatory tone right that again is not called for so when you're being polite it has to be in all sense of the word yeah. you have to be respectful inadequate knowledge or skill when you are given any task you should master that task learn more about it before indulging in that task so on job or at home anything when we are saying the work is everywhere everything so you should keep on learning and show that you are ready to learn gain knowledge so inadequate knowledge can sometimes cause very serious mishappenings also if you are cutting the vegetables for example and if you do not know how to take that knife and cut the vegetable you may cut your hand also another is wastage of resources that is very very important just now we have talked about regarding the environment we are wasting the resources if the tap is leaking we do not care about it the water is wasting and wasting and wasting we keep throwing the paper we keep throwing the plastic in the environment everywhere and if something can be used reuse why not yes exactly see there are two aspects of looking at this problem one is disrespect for the environment right where we keep on maltreating our environment keeping throwing things and taking things away from the environment that is one aspect of it the other aspect is use of our resources resources it any resource you look at is limited right the more we waste it the faster we use it up we have fuels petrol diesel aircraft fuel the and more that, the faster we use it the faster we run out of it what will the, our future will so do so we are coming to a future where we will have to uh, maybe use only public transport or walk which is what our forefathers used to do you, yeah right for the, miles and miles but small little things you know right. you see a small child uh, who has just started going to school and uh, is having fun with the uh, pencils so this child loves to sharpen the pencil yes she will put it in the sharpener and keep and sharpening, go on sharpening yeah. it and she will make pretty designs out of those shavings yes but while the child is enjoying herself the mother has to tell her that this is wastage yes because the more you sharpen the pencil the faster it is going to end, end. and then she will need to buy a new pencil and that will also end so it begins right from childhood the wastage of yes. resources water while you're brushing your teeth or you're shaving you keep the running. tap is on the maid is uh, washing the clothes the tap is on she's washing the utensils the tap is on and at the time wastage is too much now we are not of time in... wastage of time another extremely important resource we have only 24 hours yeah. in a day if we waste those 24 hours we will never get them back 
time just goes. So utilization of effective time, that is very, very important. And for any, any resource that we have, we have to be very careful in using them and not wasting our resources. Yeah. Now, this picture is showing the disregard for the rules and regulation. Everywhere you need to make a line somewhere, but some of the people you are seeing are outside, keep calling. So, they are breaking the line. So, this is a disregard for the rules and all these things. Another person is making the fun. So, that means whatever task is being given to this fellow is not doing rather making the fun to the work given to him. Another is this in a larger area we talk about it is a no work is less or more respectful. Some of the jobs are considered in the society high or low, but that should not be the case until unless that work is giving you the satisfaction and giving the protect. The three figures are shown here. One is the selling the vegetables on the road. Another is selling the bangles on the shop. And the third picture is showing the work in the office. But all people are doing their work. If they do not enjoy, keep cribbling about their jobs. So that is a disrespect for the task at hand. Let us see what other things are there. So these are the consequences of the unethical practices. If keep on doing, keep on doing it. One is alcoholism and the drug abuse. There is no law and order. There is crimes may be increased. Corruption may be increased. Wastage of resources keep on increasing, keep on increasing. And one can be the lead to end of the day. So all are the punishable things if you do not care about the ethical behavior. Keep doing the unethical behavior. So these are some of the consequences. The consequences can be very bad, they can be very harsh because we start doing things without thinking about them and then they tend to become a habit. So when it yes. becomes a habit, you become victim of that habit. As you have just shown through these pictures ma'am, I appreciate that because you know what is a very innocuous little thing like you know, I am taking drugs, that is my personal choice, I want to take, take drugs. When I am under the influence of drugs, I sometimes don't have control over my actions. I do not know what I am doing. I may even steal to get money to feed uh, my Take habit of drugs. drugs. I may even be moved to uh, committing a murder to get money to feed my habit. Now, what began as a very small little innocuous thing, uh, one unethical behavior of taking drugs it becomes a chain it leads to serious things yes and then we may end up even losing our lives loss of if liberty i will come to basically why we are talking of about ethics in this particular program because i feel that our audience is to a large extent young people and these young people are the future of our country right if we can guide them and show them about the importance of ethics, tomorrow, five years, ten years down the line, our country is going to benefit by having people who are very strong morally, who are able to judge the right and the wrong and take action appropriately. So our country is going to benefit after all, so. so we just want to uh, say the simple message, the keep calm, positive and negative thinking has to be there. And let us see what are the certain code of ethics you can follow. This is so a long list of code of uh, ethics. I think we can let our uh, learners, learners to, to read it through. Yeah. So as we have also talked about uh, long on these issues. Be friendly, be punctual, be regular and behave properly, respect the environment, respect the singles. So these are some of the list our learners can easily read about it. And let us but, see how uh, we can do it for the publicly and the other schools and all these things. Ma'am, there is one thing I would like to, I mean, we can give a long list of things people yes. can observe in their lives that this is ethical behavior. But the responsibility of a person who herself is ethical, but is observing another person who is being unethical. That is very How critical. How do I interact? 
should I, should I not, should I just close my eyes and go away and say I am ethical, that is all that matters to me. If ABC is unethical, that is their business. I would say that no, it is not their business, it, it is my business also. also. So if I see someone who is being unethical, it is my responsibility to stop that person and guide that person. But even then, if that person doesn't listen, what does not do? mend the, mend the ways, do? then what is the solution? The solution, I think, may be in public showing yeah. up of that person to publicly declare that this person does this and when other people hear of it, there will be a public shaming of that person. And, you know, if it is in, in the office, it can be put up on a notice board that this person has done That's this. blacklisted. I, I don't want my name to come up on the notice board and everyone to know that, oh, this ma'am does things in this way, which is not good. And everyone thinks very badly of me. I don't want to do that. So that may be one of the ways to help an unethical person to mend their ways and to conform to a right. what the society wants them to do and do behave. Well. Yeah. So these are the three points, as you rightly said, the public disclosure yes. about the misbehavior. And the second is the preparation for the code of ethics. If we keep teaching or showing something else and make promptly show those exposure and at the, that moment of time, if we teach this is right, this is wrong, this is also equally important to teach the lessons of ethics and the morals values in schools and colleges through various means it can be there but there are various ways we can teach these things through lectures through demonstration through small small activities film shows somewhere or the other if the teachers and the school authorities are able to do that kind i think the learners will be more apprehensive about it and also when we talk of uh, people who are engaged in uh, open learning courses, they do not go to any schools. They right. do not have uh, teachers, they do not have a principal, uh, they do not have that kind of a routine. But they do have friends who are also engaged in the same kind of learning activity as they are. So peer pressure and peer learning is also very important. But we have also talked about if wherever they are working, and these are the modalities we have talked about can be also be followed at the organization level also. Very true, very true. So it's not only the school, organization is working on the basis of the workers. If they are behaving in an ethical manner, uh, we said that it is the integrity of the organization that speak loud yes. uh, through the workers only. Definitely. So the message that goes out in the end is that each one of us as a member of the society has a responsibility to see that ethical values are practiced by us and to guide those who are near us, who are around us to also behave in ethical manner. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Randa. Thank you. You have spared your valuable time and guide our learners. Thank you.